Back at the Woody Hayes Athletic Center here on Tuesday, Ohio State getting ready for Michigan State. And Ryan Day got a lot of questions today about Kyle McCord's performance against Rutgers and maybe just in general and the progress that he's made this year. And also the offense in general asking, you know, hey, you've had some rough first halves and then it looks great in the second half. Are you worried that it's going to – I actually I asked that question. Are you worried that you're going to get yourself in a crater? So <laughs> – <laughs> Are you going to have to dig out of a hole one of these weeks and it's going to be too late? And, Andrew, there's been a lot of, I think, consternation about this passing offense not looking the way it has looked in the past. And we knew that it wasn't going to look as it looked in the past, but I, there's also a vibe there that um, the lack of consistency, the lack of maybe um, the explosiveness is, is rubbing people the wrong way. Do you feel like it is still a problem for this offense? And do you think these next two games give an adequate uh, amount of time? Today, Ryan Day used the word urgency. I, the question I asked, like, hey, there's some urgency here, his his word, to get this thing clicking at a, at a higher level. Do you feel that same way? I think that there has to be urgency, obviously, to get it going in these next two weeks against Michigan State and then against Minnesota. But you're kind of going in blind at this point to the Michigan game. You, you've kind of run out of errors here. It's like if this was a Broadway play, which you and I just saw, uh, if this was a Broadway play, there is no dress rehearsal. There is no Penn State game to, to see what you can do here. There is no Wisconsin game to see what you can do here. You can run the ball really effectively against against Michigan State. You can throw you could throw for 350 yards against Michigan State. But if Kyle McCord goes out there and has a great game and Marv has 200 yards and all of these great things happen, is anybody going to sit here and say, I've seen enough that this team can beat Michigan? Maybe, I, I, maybe, but you're not going to be fully confident in saying that, at least not for me. I like I, You would have seen it against teams that are you know a little bit bottom of the barrel big 10 teams especially this week against Michigan State so there you need to get it on track I think but you're not going to know until the Michigan game if you've seen it get on track because I don't know if it's repeatable what you're going to be able to do against Michigan State and then against Minnesota against Michigan so the explosive plays are a problem in the past game like you've got to get those going because that's how I think this team can strike because we've seen them wear on people over the course of the game and not so much in the we're going to beat you up and run the ball and all of a sudden we're just going to explode in the second half. I think they're just more talented than a lot of these teams and the talent wears on people and it just wears people out and they just can't keep up with it for a full 60 minutes. And that's you can carry that to a lot of different games, but the explosive plays really are going to impact things. So you've got to get that on track, but I'm not going to feel confident in it no matter how – like I'm, I don't even know what the scenario would have to be for me to be like, this is it. They've turned it around. They're 100% firing on all cylinders. Now they can go in and beat Michigan. Like i got to see it against Michigan now. Do you feel the same way, Stephen, that if, if they go out and, and are more efficient and explosive both these next two weeks, that that still isn't is going to leave doubt in your mind whether it happens against Michigan? No, because I'm the way you asked the question with Andrew, I thought was really good. You said, "Is it a problem?" I don't think it's a problem. For one, Kyle McCord's like top fifteen in the country in yards per attempt. So this, it's not like the offense is not explosive at all. It, it's it's fine. it's not C.J. Stroud explosive, but it's it's got some explosive elements. But I don't think it's a problem. It's just not the weapon we're used to seeing it be. And I we talked at length about this. It doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be the primary weapon against Michigan for Ohio State to win. Its defense is the primary weapon. This running game starting to get going is the primary weapon. But this guy over here working out behind us, Marvin Harrison Jr., he is a weapon. And But we haven't seen – outside of Marvin Harrison Jr. this year, anybody else be a consistent weapon. We talked about this in the Monday pod, Nathan. Emeka Buka was in attendance. But that was not a Mecca Buka and fully yet. And that's he was even on the field. He was on the field, but he wasn't his full self yet. And that's because he hadn't played in basically a month by the time he got back on the field against Rutgers. So it's not about, oh, I'm going to see Kyle McCord throw for 350 yards and five touchdowns and go, oh, well, the offense is back. The passing attack is going to be awesome for the rest of the season. No, it's not about that. I just want to see, can they do it? Because I know Kyle McCord can show up in the moments when you need him to show up because he did it against Notre Dame and he did it against Penn State. But we haven't seen this element yet. And to the point of the, the no dress rehearsal, the next two weeks can be your dress rehearsal because you're playing teams who aren't going to be able to do anything about your passing attack. So just put it on film, put it on paper, and see the ball go through the hoop. So then when you are in the third quarter and it's third and seven and you need an explosive play because you're trying to keep up with the game, you're trying to win a game, you know Kyle McCord can do it. It's not about him being able to do it for 60 minutes. It's about him being able to do it in moments. Yeah, to me, like the least important thing these next two weeks is like yardage. Uh, I think it's all about situations. It's about when the pocket collapses and Kyle McCord has to 
make a momentary decision, what does he do? Like, wh- where does he go with it? Does he just eat it and take the sack? Does he make a better decision than he was maybe making two, three weeks ago, earlier this season? When they're in the red zone, do they execute better so they are getting more touchdowns in those situations than field goals? Like, those are the things that are going to beat Michigan. I know that people are waiting for this moment where there's just this aerial attack and they're just bombing away. And, uh, frankly, that is not how Ohio State's offense operated even with C.J. Stroud, like he was a very accurate downfield passer, but a lot of explosive plays are explosive plays because of what the guy who's who you get the ball in the hands of does with the ball after that. It's not just all bombing over the top. You know what I mean? Like there's and and they are leaving yards on the field that aren't just mistakes Kyle McCord has made or misreads or just bad throws. It's guys dropping balls and things like that that are happening that are hurting them in critical times. So I'm looking at situations. I'm looking at do they start reducing the number of drops that hurt them in those tough situations? Do they start um do you see Kyle McCord maybe do take an extra a couple of shots, a couple extra chances downfield. You you asked Ryan Day today when you rewatch the game, were you seeing him not take enough shots downfield? And he said no, that he thought that the the two guys over the top coverage that Rutgers was playing pretty effectively took that away, so they had to work underneath more, and that's where you saw the 11 for 11 that started that game. There were also some stretches where I think Kyle McCord wasn't efficient enough, and I think he'd probably say the same thing. And that's the thing that has to get worked out over these next two weeks. It's raising the efficiency, and I think with greater efficiency, you're going to see greater explosiveness. If G. Scott catches that pass on third down, number one, who knows how many more yards he would have gotten with it. That would have been interesting to find out. Number two, you're keeping a drive alive, and maybe that's what that's where the explosive play would have happened. Maybe that's where you get Marvin Harrison Jr. behind a defensive back or whatever. Like That's just an opportunity that never arose because of a mistake that was made, and they have to overcome their mistakes better. So all, those are the things I'm looking for these next two weeks. It's not about whether this passing offense like – goes into the stratosphere and and looks like something some run and shoot thing that we haven't been seeing i think it's more just about executing what they're already doing better than they've been executing it we'll discuss that and maybe debate it more on buckeye talk get at wherever you can find podcasts and get the text 614-350-3315 for our news analysis everything else all week from cleveland.com